It is Monday, February 8. Welcome to CGN News. Haitian President Jovenel Moise announced Sunday that police have arrested more than 20 people he accused of trying to kill him and overthrow his government. Moise spoke at Haiti's airport in Port-au-Prince, flanked by the country's prime minister and the police chief, as he prepared to leave for the town of Jacmel for the opening ceremony of its yearly carnival. Moise said the alleged plot began on November 20, but did not provide further details except to say among the people arrested is a judge and an inspector general with the police. He indicated that other high-ranking officials would provide more information. An earthquake with a magnitude of 5.0 was felt in the British Virgin Islands early Saturday. According to the British Virgin Islands Department of Disaster Management, the Puerto Rico Seismic Network recorded the earthquake around 3.05 a.m. local time. The epicenter of the quake was located at latitude 19.15 degrees north and 65.81 degrees west. The quake was also felt in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. So far, there have been no reports of damage or injuries. Three men have been charged in connection with the shooting death of 51-year-old Andrea Lowe Garwood, a bank manager of Stony Brook Manor in Trelawney, Jamaica. Her stepson, 29-year-old Javan Garwood, also called Janoy, has been charged with murder and conspiracy to murder, and 23-year-old Leon Hines, a storekeeper of Rose Heights, St. James, was charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, accessory before the fact, accessory after the fact, and conspiracy to murder. Dwight Bingham was charged with murder and illegal possession of firearm. Reports are that at about 10.30 a.m., Garwood was in a worship session at church when a man posing as a member of the congregation shot her several times. She was taken to hospital where she died while undergoing treatment. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, says the team monitoring activity at La Soufrière Volcano will now permanently occupy the Belmont Observatory. Scientists continue to see growth in the new dome with lateral spreading of material towards the north and south, CMC reports. According to NEMO, the most active gas emissions are at the contact areas between the pre-existing 1979 dome and the 2020-21 to 21 dome, as well as the top of the new dome. The organization has reminded the public to avoid visiting the volcano. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has not seen volcanic activity since 1979. Cuba says it will allow private businesses to operate in most industries in what is a major reform to its state-controlled economy. Labor Minister Marta Elena Feito said the list of authorized industries has expanded from 127 to more than 2,000. Only a minority of industries would be reserved for the state, she said. The country's economy has been hit hard by the pandemic and the U.S. sanctions introduced by the Trump administration. Last year, its economy saw its worst decline in almost three decades, and Cuba has been facing shortage of basic goods. Tributes have been pouring in following news of the passing of former West Indies fast bowler Ezra Mosley, who died in a vehicular accident in Barbados on Saturday. Reports are that the 63-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene after his bicycle collided with an SUV. Cricket West Indies CWI director Jimmy Adams said Mosley will be remembered as, quote, one of the region's premier fast bowlers from the late 1970s throughout the 1980s and into the early 1990s, end quote. CWI's operations manager, Roland Holder, described the Barbadian as an excellent team man, while West Indies women's all-rounder Deandra Dotin hailed Mosley as, quote, a very good cricket coach who helped the players in all departments, end quote. St. Vincent Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez says he will take the Russian-developed Sputnik COVID-19 vaccine on Tuesday. Gonzalez made the announcement during an interview on WEFM on Sunday, three days after telling Parliament he was giving it, quote, prayerful consideration. 
He noted that the country has received 20 doses of the Sputnik vaccine. He added that infectious disease specialist Dr. Gerald Thompson, a former Minister of Science as well as Medical Officer of Health Dr. Duncan, and a few other persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines had already received the Sputnik jab. President Joe Biden has launched a campaign to support LGBTIQ people abroad, putting their rights higher on the U.S. foreign policy agenda than ever before. Elevating a 2011 initiative launched by Barack Obama, Biden is expanding the scope of U.S. efforts on LGBTIQ rights while also adjusting based on lessons learned over the past decade. In his first foreign policy speech, Biden announced Thursday he was ordering all U.S. government agencies active abroad to promote the rights of LGBTIQ people and to come up with plans within 180 days. The memorandum said that the United States would also combat discriminatory laws overseas and work to build international coalitions against homophobia and transphobia, the AFP reports. Hundreds of military personnel have been deployed in the Indian Himalayas to help find at least 150 people unaccounted for after a part of a glacier broke away, killing 14 people. Sunday's violent surge swept away a small hydroelectric project and damaged a bigger one further downstream. Most of the missing were people working on the two government projects deep in the mountains as part of a development push. An official told Indian news media on Monday that 153 people were missing from the two projects. And finally, leaders in Houston, Texas, United States unveiled a two-block mural Saturday dedicated to George Floyd and located directly in front of his alma mater, Jack Yates High School. Quote, we come to celebrate the life and legacy of our hometown hero, Mr. George Floyd, end quote, Carl Davis, chairman of the Houston Society for Change said during the dedication ceremony. Floyd, a 46-year-old African-American, died in May after a Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck as Floyd pleaded he couldn't breathe. The mural was commissioned by Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis, the Houston Society for Change, and 88 CHUMP, a nonprofit social activism organization created by Floyd's football teammates, CNN reported. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.